No idea if keto and intermittent fasting work well together? I'm gonna to tell you a secret. They do, and they work fantastically well together, in fact. Tune in, because in this video, I'm gonna share my personal experience having great success combining the keto diet with intermittent fasting and extended fasting. I'm gonna share all my secrets. Let's dive in. You know the drill. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe because I know you don't wanna miss out on anything. And also make sure you hit that little bell so that anytime I put out a new video, you are the first to know. Hey everybody, Kelly Alexa here, fitness fanatic, serial entrepreneur, confidence coach, and most recently, keto convert. With the help of my doctor, my functional medicine doctor that is, I've recently gone keto and combined with intermittent fasting and extended fasting, I've lost 13 pounds and 15 inches off this body in 10 weeks. And I'm now becoming certified as a keto coach so that I can help women aged 40 plus bust through their weight loss plateaus. Are you ready? Let's get started. Okay, everybody, let's dive in. We're, you're here to learn about whether intermittent fasting and keto work for weight loss, right? So you're obviously looking to lose weight. Maybe you've tried intermittent fasting. Maybe you've tried keto. Maybe you've done neither. Um, I certainly had never tried keto before about 10 to 12 weeks ago. And in fact, I was the most skeptical person on the planet. I will also reference this video up above um, where I talk about my most recent experience with keto and how I was so skeptical about it previously. Um, but I have actually been doing intermittent fasting for the majority of the past, I'd say it's 2021, 10, 11, 12 years or so. I remember doing intermittent fasting way back in 2009. Um, the first, my first exposure to intermittent fasting was with Brad Pylon's book. I believe that's his last name, Eat, Stop, Eat. I actually did, and maybe I can see if I can reference this video I did forever ago, and hopefully I can link it up here. Um, it was a video I did about Brad Pylon's uh, Eat, Stop, Eat, and my experiences with it. So I've always had a pretty good time or an easy time doing inter intermittent fasting, but I will give you a little bit of a spoiler. The combination of intermittent fasting as well as extended fasting, which the first one of the first things I'm gonna do is explain for those of you that are like, wait, what is the difference between extended fasting and intermittent fasting? I'm gonna explain that before we go any further. Um, first here, um, there is nothing to me that is easier um, as far as doing or executing intermittent fasting as when you're on the keto diet. I also hate just saying being on the keto diet. It just sounds like it's like you're on the cabbage soup diet or you're on something that, that's so transitional or something that's temporary. Um, the keto way of life is a way of life for me now. It is something, um, do I think that I'll never have bread again my whole life? No. Is this a way of life for me? Absolutely. This has changed my life. But that said, I'm going to stay focused and make sure I talk to you just about this today. So. Point number one, let's make sure we distinguish between intermittent fasting and extended fasting. Pretty sure everybody that's tuning in has a conceptual idea of the difference, but intermittent fasting, again, is, let me give you an example. When you choose a specific period of time, less than 24 hours for the most part, this is my definition, my, my way of, of de de defining this, excuse me, um, where you're going to not eat, whether it's eight hours or 10 hours, five hours, whatever it is. And then you have a time period, your eating window, the people usually say, where you will eat. Extended fasting is going to be something typically uh, of a time period of 24 hours or more. So 24 hours, 48 hour, a 24 hour fast, a 48 hour fast, a 60 hour fast, a 72 hour fast. So when you hear me referencing extended fasting, I am talking about 24 hour plus fasting. The main differences are 
intermittent fasting is something typically most people are gonna do on an ongoing basis every single day. I am currently doing, um, I was in a reverse diet for about a year before I got back to intermittent fasting. When I was on the reverse diet, I was not intermittent fasting at all. Um, and that was on purpose. I was healing my adrenal fatigue. I was eating more. I was eating three, three meals a day. There was absolutely no reason for me to be incorporating intermittent fasting at that point. Intermittent fasting, in my opinion, is one of the best techniques to shorten your eating window and keep yourself in a caloric deficit. I do think, and I'm gonna to get to that in a couple of the future points, people overthink intermittent fasting, so I'm gonna to get to that in a second. But intermittent fasting, again, is something that you are typically gonna practice every day. For, for example, right now what I'm doing is I get up every morning, I have my keto coffee, I then don't eat until lunch. I typically have two meals a day, I have lunch, maybe a snack in between lunch and dinner. I'm not snacking nearly as much um, as, I, as I used to, um, and now I have dinner and then hardly ever have a snack after dinner and that's it. Um, extended fasting is something that you can also incorporate in addition to intermittent fasting. For example, um, I am now incorporating one 24-hour fast a week and one, I haven't done this yet, one 60-hour fast per month. So hopefully that helps explain the difference between intermittent fasting and extended fasting just so that we all understand each other going into what we're talking about today because there's, there's very two different approaches but they also can be mixed as well and they both work really well with keto and they're both more in my opinion and my experience um, more beneficial when combined with keto and more easily done when combined with keto so why is intermittent fast intermittent fasting so helpful it's helpful because as I mentioned before it's fantastic for cutting down your eating window which is going to help you do what get yourself into a caloric uh, caloric restriction or um, a caloric deficit which is really the single most important thing that all of us need to do if we're trying to lose weight and it's just funny because over the past 10 or 15 years caloric deficit is which is one of the most basic principles of losing weight is what really got away from so many people nobody wanted to talk about you have to count your calories you have to be in a caloric deficit you've got to watch how much you eat everybody thought you could just go paleo or just eat organic food or just shop at Whole Foods and it doesn't work that way. You have to be aware of how much you're eating. You have to be in a caloric deficit. So intermittent fasting, shortening your eating window is something that is fantastic for, again, eliminating the amount of time that you're shoving food in your mouth. We sadly live in, especially in America, I don't know, I can't speak to Canada, obviously, but we live in a country where it's very easy. It's, it's extremely accessible for us to have food at our fingertips all the time. And it's, it's easy to be eating and snacking all the time. And we're not even aware all the time of how I think we're, we're just constantly grazing. That's a word that we're, <laughs> it's just, when did that word even come into existence outside of cows? Let's just, God, that's so ironic think about it um, it shouldn't we should we as humans should not be grazing we should not be snacking like that all the time we should be eating meals not grazing like cows okay so intermittent fasting it's a fantastic technique however I'm I'm moving right into one of my my second points which is this if you're gonna use intermittent fasting ladies as a weight loss technique please do yourself a favor do not think it is some scientific, this is my opinion, it is not a scientific miracle and, and stop overthinking intermittent fasting. What intermittent fasting is, is a method to allow you to restrict your calories. It is a method to allow you to shorten your time window so that you hit a caloric deficit. Really, that's it. When I see women going, oh my God, it's 11.55, I have five more minutes until I'm allowed to eat again, and they literally will sit and watch the clock until their window is up, 
and, and they can eat their food. Okay, your body doesn't know between the difference between when it's 11.55 and 12 o'clock. And whether you eat that bagel at 11.55 or 11.58 in 30 seconds or 12 o'clock, it doesn't matter. What matters is your calories and your movement and the big picture. Okay, so obsessing about your eating window and obsessing about the minutes and obsessing about stuff like that is silly. Also, obsessing about things like um, when you wake up in the morning, and I used to be this person, when you wake up in the morning and you have your coffee, if I put a splash of cream in my coffee, is that breaking my fast? If I put, you know, if I'm having MCT oil, is that really breaking my fast and obsessing about what's breaking your fast? Here's the deal. This is why I chose to go over extended fasting versus intermittent fasting. Again, I'm going to put this out there. I'm not a doctor. I'm not Dave Asprey. I'm not one of these biohacking experts. I'm just Kelly Alexa, super guru. I'm actually not a super guru. I'm just a super cool chick. But here's the deal. Unless you're doing extended fasting, when you're doing intermittent fasting, if you have a cup of coffee, and like, here's the bottom line. The benefits of intermittent fasting are caloric restriction. So if you choose to have a cup of coffee in the morning, like I do, the the benefits of intermittent fasting are you're cutting your calories. You're you're eating in a smaller window, so you have less um, time to eat calories, so it's easier for you to be in your caloric your your caloric restricted window. You're, it's easier for you, like in my case, I'm I'm 1600 calories. It's you know I have two meals. It's easier for me to hit 1600 calories than if I was eating in um, an 18 hour window where I could spread it out, you know, and 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 so on and so forth. Stop worrying about your coffee having 50 calories or 35 calories, and if the 35 calories breaks your fast. It's not about the fasting. You, the only thing when you need to worry about breaking a fast is when you're in a 24-hour fast or longer. That's when you're in, when you're dealing with things like autophagy. Now, if you guys want to go do some Googling on autophagy, and I'll cover all of that in a completely separate, um, I almost said podcast, hard, hard plug for my podcast. Make sure you go subscribe because I'm going to be relaunching my podcast as well. And I'll probably link up to some really good and relevant episodes here for the Kelly O Show podcast. But um, what I mean here is I will cover autophagy, extended fasting. There's, there's benefits there. But in that case, that's when you really want to make sure that you are like only drinking liquids, not having any food, not breaking your fast. That's a very specific thing that you're doing. And that's when you don't want to break your fast. Intermittent fasting, you're really just eating in a smaller window because, and you're eating less calories. Stop overthinking it, okay? Do we make that clear? Intermittent fasting, not that big of a deal. You're just eating in a smaller time window. Stop overthinking it. Okay, so here's why I'm going to tell you. I referenced this at the beginning of this video why I've told you that I've done um, intermittent fasting when I haven't been keto and intermittent fasting obviously now when I am keto. I have never in my whole life experienced what I'm experiencing now with my uh, cravings being so decreased or curbed if you will, my appetite being so decreased Um, my desire to snack being so almost non-existent, Um, my hunger being so controlled, my relationship with food being so different. So big picture, I have to tell you that doing intermittent fasting and, and extended fasting when you are on the keto diet and really doing the keto diet right. So not doing the keto diet and, and going out and buying all the slim fast bars and fake foods and, you know, um, pigging out or, you know, just, you know what I'm saying? Doing the keto diet right and staying on it long term, you will experience an ease of fasting like you never have before. When I was doing fasting or intermittent fasting, I never did extended fasting before, but when I did intermittent fasting before, I had to chug so much Diet Coke 
Number one, to address my sweet tooth. Number two, um, it, it kind of was the way I would trick my body or trick my stomach into thinking I was not eating something, but it just felt like it was, I was tasting something. The, the soda was like, it was just my way of like, well, I'm giving myself something to taste and there's fizz and it would fill me up in a way. But I was always having to play mind games with myself and trick myself from the hunger pangs. So I could get through it, um, but I really had to focus on it. Um, and, and, and again, I did it. It was something that I was able to get through. But when you're eating the way that I used to eat with a lot of carbs and a lot of foods that are, are not filling, you're not eating a lot of fat, you're not full at your meals, um, your hunger pangs will be a lot more intense. Your cravings will be in your head, in your stomach. You will be obsessing about food a lot more it's a completely different world when you are on keto. Um, and furthermore, I'm just gonna throw this in here because I absolutely know this without question. So one of the things that I threw into the mix about, so I, I, I started my, what I call my official start date of going keto. Um, and again, I'm gonna point up here and reference the video that I did um, the video that I did about my keto experience um, where I where I talk about this but I went hardcore keto where I started weighing myself and measuring myself June 1st of 2021 it is now August 18th so I'm just about 10 weeks in before that before June 1st I had kind of started going keto cutting the carbs watching my macros but I wasn't really bought in so in, in May, I'd started going keto, kind of sloppy keto, but I was still having some things like gluten-free muffins and I just wasn't all the way in, you guys. So even though I started easing my way into it and I was starting to go keto and low carb, I didn't officially start tracking things until June 1st. And then um, it was about March 31st that I placed my first order for exogenous ketones. This product that I ordered through Prove It, I am full disclosure a um, a distributor with the company now because I'm so blown away by the products. Uh, both my husband and I drink them every day. We drink about two to three of them a day. It's uh, a product that comes in powder form and you put them in water and then you shake it up. They're delicious. They come in all these flavors. You can order from me. Um, but here's the thing. The great thing about exogenous ketones, particularly the ketones that, that we sell at Prove It, um, not only are they fantastic tasting, they come in all these great flavors, caffeinated and non-caffeinated, they help with energy. The energy you will get from them, nice, clean, pure energy, not jittery energy like you get from a pre-workout or anything like that. But the appetite suppression is ridiculous. Before I added that, I noticed an absolute difference with keto before and then adding those in. So that has also been a noticeable difference. Um, but there is a huge difference again between my life not being keto and being true keto, having the healthy fats, eating real meals, making sure that I'm getting, you know, the kind of, like I only have 60, about 50 to 60 grams of protein a day. My doctor doesn't want me having a lot of protein. So I have about 50 to 60 grams of protein a day, 50 grams of carbs. I don't count net carbs and all of that. I do 50 grams of carbs, no more than that a day. And then the rest is healthy fats. I believe it's about 125 grams. So I'm at 1600 calories a day. That's what has me losing. But I'm just so completely full and satisfied with my meals. I usually will only snack on like a cheese spread or cheddar cheese or nut butter if I snack between meals. It's rare that I snack. Um, my computer is going into screensaver, but everything is different. And that's why I'm saying my big takeaway for you in this video is that intermittent fasting combined with keto is so much easier to do. And that's why I think it's so much more effective because why do you do intermittent fasting? You do intermittent fasting because it helps you get in a caloric deficit. When you get into a caloric deficit, you lose weight. 
But if you get into a caloric deficit using other kinds of foods, you're gonna typically have more cravings and obsess about foods. I was there. I had cravings, I obsessed about food, I binged all the time, I didn't lose weight. Now I'm not saying that everybody needs to go on the keto diet, by no means, but I'm just gonna tell you, if you're a woman in this age range of 35 to 40 plus, and you're having difficulty losing weight, if you've been like me five to 10 years, maybe it's one to two years, you have not been able to lose weight, nothing's working for you, you suspect or you know that you have hormone issues, you should be looking at keto and then combining it with intermittent fasting. And then you wanna level up, then you add extended fasting. And then you, I mean, if you really wanna level up, you know, talk to me and then certainly incorporate the exogenous ketones in there too. I mean, all of these things mix them in together. I mean, look at me, I'm, I'm just telling you, if you're new to this channel, do some digging, do some research on me, go look at my Instagram channel, go look at my blog, poke around my podcast, poke around my blog, poke around my Instagram channel, you will see I have struggled for the last five to seven years. And now in 10 weeks, I have made more progress doing keto intermittent fasting with exogenous ketones. I've made more progress in 10 weeks than I have in 10 years. What do you think about that? Bam. Let me ask you this, everybody. How is this video making you feel? Is it making you curious? Is it making you go, hmm? This is something that I have to do because Kelly Alexa is speaking my language. Kelly Alexa is speaking to my struggle. I want to hear from you. Leave a comment below, like this video, tell me what you think, tell me what your questions are. I'm here to answer whatever questions you have about keto, about intermittent fasting, about extended fasting, about what I'm going to be adding as I progress. I'm 10 weeks in. I'm not at my I'm not at my goal weight yet. I'm almost to my goal weight. Let's see. Well, I don't want to say I'm almost to my goal weight. Um, I still have, if I want to hit my goal weight, I'm at 151. I still have a good 13 pounds to go um, if I plan to hit my goal weight. So I will let you guys know everything I'm doing along the way. I'm going to be recording everything on my blog over at kellyalexa.com. But hit me up in the comments below. Let me know what your questions are. Let me know how I can help you. Okay, everybody. So let me wrap this up for you. And I've pretty much alluded to it before but i have to tell you again from my own personal experience and my own personal and very recent experience the combination of intermittent fasting with the keto diet and then if you really want to take that up a notch intermittent fasting with the keto diet and then you add on another layer of like extended fasting like throw in maybe every other week, a 24 hour fast, or throw in um, once a week, like I'm starting to do, a one 24 hour fast, and once a month you do a 60 hour fast. Or, you know, maybe you just start, you know, every third week, it doesn't matter, but throwing in some of those extended fasts. If you have questions on the extended fast, leave a comment below, private message me, email me, kelly at kellyalexa.com. I'm happy to answer any questions on this. Fasting is good for you. You know what my doctor told me about the fasting? And she told me this at the very beginning of when she was putting me on this diet, when I was giving her so much pushback. She, she was, now I'm paraphrasing here, so bear with me. But I was like, oh, keto, really? You know, like low carb, really? I just, I was giving her such pushback. And the way that she described it, and she sent me quite a lot of podcasts to listen to. Um, she had me read this book, The Longevity Diet. Um, that was really more about understanding why women 40 plus don't need so much protein, you know, so like I've been taught for years by so many trainers, you know, we, I've been taught five meals a day, 30 grams of protein per, per meal. I've been trying to, you know, eat 120, 150 grams of protein a day for years and years and years. And all of that, all of those years of eating all that protein was probably teaching my body to store fat. Now I'm eating so much less protein and I mean, look what's going on. If you look at my Instagram post today, you will see, you will see the transformation. Um, so I will tell you when she's, when she was explaining um, that anytime you do a 24 hour fast or more, it's almost like when we reset our phone, when you reset your phone or you reset your computer and you shut it off and you reboot it, what happens? 
everything that was frozen before, everything that wasn't working, all of a sudden you reboot your computer, it miraculously works again. That's what happens with the way that she described it. She was saying like my, my fat cells or, or the, I'm paraphrasing here. I know I'm not saying it correctly. She said, my body's fat cells were not releasing fat. Like they weren't releasing the way that they're normally supposed to release fat and lose fat. And she said, when you do a, a, um, a fast, it's essentially teaching your body how to lose fat again. Um, it's, it's resetting your cells. And so every 24 hour fast or more is, is essentially like resetting and it's a cumulative effect. So each new fast is resetting. And I'm like, well, sign me up. You know what I'm saying? Now that doesn't happen with the intermittent fasting. That doesn't mean intermittent fasting is useless. It is a tool. Okay. So intermittent fasting is a tool. Extended fasting is a tool. Exogenous ketones are a tool. They're all part of the package. And so for me, I've just gone in layers. First, I started keto. Then I added the ketones. Then I'm adding the um, 24 hour fasts once a week. Then the next thing is I'm going to be adding the 60 hour fast maybe 72 hour fast if I can do it once a month. Um, they're all tools, you just keep adding layers. And I'm telling you, the whole fasting thing, the extended fasting, when you're doing the keto diet, and, and again, I do have to reiterate, I will do a whole separate video on this because I feel so strongly about it. I, I can't stress this strongly enough, how much the exogenous ketones have helped my husband is not keto. He does them twice a day. He takes the, the drink twice a day. He has remarked as well how much they have helped him not only with his energy and focus during the day, but also to help decrease his appetite. He was he used to have these um, first form protein bars every afternoon, and they're very sweet. Um, they're delicious, actually. I used to have them every afternoon too because I had such a sweet tooth. He doesn't have them anymore. Further, he used to talk about, or he used to say that everybody at the office would have, you know, ca typical office, you know, candy out on, on the desks. People were bringing in snacks and he's like, I was just eating every single day. Well, ever since he's taking the, the ketones drinks, he's not snacking at the office anymore. Um, it is outrageous how much that stuff helps curb the appetite. But that is also in combination with eating a high fat diet, lower carb. When, when I started to really think about how much my diet had changed with keto, it made me realize how much my diet before was creating an insulin response. When I realized everything I was cutting out, I realized, wow, all the kombucha I was drinking, all of the quinoa and rice and um, sushi with rice and fruit, the acai bowls. I mean, I was, I'm not saying like those are bad foods, you guys. For a lot of people, those are things they can eat all the time. But for people with insulin resistance and hormone issues like I have, that's basically like lighting a match for a fire you can never put out and not a good fire, okay? Think about it. Now that that stuff I'm not putting in my body on a daily basis, the insulin response is gone. And now that the insulin response is gone, my body is actually burning fat. I mean, I'm a walking, living proof example that, that what I'm saying and what my doctor told me first would happen is true. So in closing, like I said at the beginning of this video, intermittent fasting and keto, does it work for weight loss? Absolutely. If you wanna take things up a notch, you add extended fasting and you incorporate exogenous ketones. I am living proof. Uh, this is why I have become such an evangelist for keto. I never ever thought, if you told me six months ago that I'd be recording this video and saying I'm a keto evangelist, I would have been like, you're drunk. <laughs> but I am, I am getting certified, like I told you, as a keto coach so that uh, when I coach people and when, when women want my help, I will be certified. I will know the science behind this. I won't just be like, well, I don't know how it works, but it works. Um, and again, if you want my help, leave me a comment below. Email me at kelly at kellyalexa.com. I want to help you. This stuff works and I have never, ever, ever felt better. 
it is the best feeling in the world for me to walk into my closet and feel like I'm walking into a new store because I haven't been able to wear 85% of the stuff in my closet for the past five years. And now I'm wearing things that I haven't worn in years and years and years. And it's like, I keep telling Steve, when I walk into my closet, I feel like that song, A Whole New World, should be playing. And in my head it is because I'm just literally like, oh, I haven't worn that, I haven't worn that, I haven't worn that, and I need to try that on, I need to try that on. It's so exciting. This is what I want for you guys, seriously. Okay guys, so now you're in the know. If you wanna get started, I've got an invitation for you. All you have to do, if you really wanna take things up a notch and apply this whole intermittent fasting plus keto and really get started losing weight, become my customer. Order some of these like amazing products that I've told you about from Prove It. They are outstanding. If you wanna get, um, some of the most popular products are this. My friend Michelle got started with the Keto Cream Coffee. You probably see me talking about it. Um, that's what I drink every morning for my coffee. It's one of our best sellers. Um, you could also get the exogenous ketones. Um, we've got a starter pack for $99 that gives you a 10 day trial pack where you get, you can do two a day for 10 days. It's some of our most popular flavors. Test it out. I'm telling you, if you do, I think if you try this for 10 days, not only will you love the flavors, but you'll experience the energy, you'll experience the appetite suppression, and you'll be so obsessed like me. Um, plus, if you start doing keto and you do it right and you stick with it, this will, I, I just remember when I started this, not just the exogenous ketones, but keto, I started seeing results so fast, there there just never was any turning back. I. I was so pleasantly surprised. I have not cheated or turned back once. If you don't believe me, ask my husband. I mean, he's in the other room, but he's not gonna come in here right now, but you can ask him. I'll have him on the show one of these days. Anyway, thanks you guys so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time on The Kelly O Show. Hey guys, I almost forgot to include these videos so that you can check them out and watch. First of all, way back when, here's my video on Brad Pylon's Eat, Stop, Eat, and when I first started doing intermittent fasting, back in the day and then second of all my most recent video on going keto and how I've had these great great results check it out